Hello everyone, what is happening? I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. I feel like your house is the one place everyone knows like the back of their hand. You come home, everything's familiar, everything smells like home, you can navigate your bum to the couch with your eyes closed, you know which snacks are going to be where and where your siblings hide the best ones. But sometimes if you've just moved into a place or you start exploring an area like an attic or a basement, you find stuff that doesn't belong to to you and sometimes, just sometimes, they can be horrific. So I've set the scene, so let's get into it. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel guys, as well as top 10 Hindi videos, but without any more delay, let's do this. This is the top 10 scary things found in people's houses. Starting us off with number 10 is the body. Yes, I'm truly starting us off with a bang, so hold on tight folks. This story comes from Redditor Eviso, who said that he visited his grandparents 1000 acre farm a while ago and he went to a location where his great great grandparents house used to be. The house was no longer there but the garage was. Now the door was rusted shut but he decided to look through a hole in the door and saw a car with a stamp on it that read Murr. The user assumed it was a Mercedes parked in there and told his dad to which his dad was like no way it's probably a Mercury. But his dad did tell one of the renters in that area about the car. The renter ended up going to the garage with the sheriff and found a teenager frozen to death in the driver's seat. According to the sheriff, the kid had run away from home in the late winter and had nowhere to go so he found the garage and parked his car in there to hide away. Covered in blankets, he still froze to death. They speculated whether the door got stuck and the teen was unable to escape and hence he froze to death or that he just froze to death and the door was able to open and close. Either way, imagine finding a corpse in your garage. That's just, that's just not what you need. That's just not what you need in your life, honestly. <laughs> Coming in at number nine is the mystery room. Now back in 2011, a group of contractors in Southern Ontario were working on a home that had been abandoned. When it came time to start working on the basement, they discovered something chilling. They found a room that was designed as a confinement or hostage room, literally. It had a thick door and it only locked from the outside and there was no way to open it from the inside. It was specifically designed to keep whoever it was inside and make sure they had no way of getting out. But the weird part was that the house had been abandoned since 2006, yet the room was built only a few years before 2011. So the room was built after the house was abandoned, which then raises a whole host of new questions. Which sick mind created this hostage room in this empty house and who do they keep down there, if anyone? At number 8 we have the exorcism kit. This one's from reddit user you've been duplicated who was cleaning out her grandmother's house after she died. Obviously as a grandma there were a lot of antiques in her house that the user was looking through till she happened upon a worn out picture of Jesus in a wooden frame but the frame was a few inches thick. The user found a latch on the side of the picture and realized the picture had a compartment at the back that you could open. When she opened it she found a bunch of ancient looking items, a rosary, a large wooden cross, a cloth, a vial and a spoon. Now just to clarify, her grandmother was a very religious woman anyway, church every day, car and house filled with religious paraphernalia, so the picture wasn't really a surprise. The user asked her mother about the things to which she said she had no idea the picture even opened. The user speculated it was her grandmother's exorcism kit in case, you know, she ever needed it. And I mean, fair enough, it's always a good thing to keep handy. You got your lip balm in your handbag, you got your pepper spray, and obviously you gotta have your exorcism kit as well. Filling our number 7 slot is the noose. Now this was shared by an anonymous person so I don't know what to say except thank you random person for the spooky story, you're the real MVP. But anyway, in this person's sophomore year of college, they decided to rent a house with some of their friends. The user didn't end up moving in with his friends but they did spend a lot of time at the house that their friends ended up choosing. Now one day they were just exploring the house and they managed to find a door behind the furnace that you couldn't see if you were in the main hallway. And of course the realtor had no idea it was even there, hence she didn't even show them it. The friends decided to go into the secret room because that's always a good idea, but they had a flashlight so at least they were prepared. The room smelled quite stuffy and it was clear that no one had been in there for ages. When they went further in, they found a noose hanging from a 1000 pound weight unit on the ceiling and a bunch of creepy things written on the wall. The friends literally did not know what to do with what they found and honestly neither would I. So they ended up cutting down the noose and never going into that room again. 
good decision. Now at number six are the rooms. Now this one's from Reddit said Johnny underscore lube who said that he moved into a place where the previous tenant had been living there for 90 years before his death. That's a whole life basically. But because of that there was a lot of stuff left in this apartment there were even casks of prohibition whiskey. After they moved in they decided to explore the attic which had no electricity so it was dark and it was cold. One room up there seemed to be a sex den or what they later coined as the rape room. Inside they found 4 foot long wire bed frames, a noose made from pantyhose, a sewing machine and a dresser in which one drawer was jammed shut and they were never able to open it. In another room it was a bit more fun, they found some couches, some newspapers from the 40s and an old Victrola but weirdly enough Johnny also found a word scribbled in his room one day in a red pen. Now the word was meow, 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 I don't know how to say the word because it's not a real word and it's been unexplainable since the day it appeared. It wasn't there when they moved in but it just randomly appeared. I have questions and I need answers. Coming in at number 5 are the jars. No, not jam jars, but after hearing the story, you would have wished that they were jam jars. Back in 2012, contractors were working on renovating a home in Hannibal, Missouri when they ventured into the basement. I'm telling you, check your basements, people, before you move in anywhere because all this stuff being found is 80% found in the basement and 20% found in the attic. Creepy things are rarely ever found in the kitchen or the living room, so people just never look beyond those rooms. But anyway, in the basement, the contractors found two jars that had feti inside that had been preserved in formaldehyde. I really want to say fetuses, but Google said it's feti, but I'm going to go with fetuses because it just, you know, sounds better rolling off the tongue. You know how it is. Apparently, the property used to house an illegal abortion clinic before the 1950s by a Dr. Hayes, which explains the jars, but still, why did they keep the fetuses to begin with? The county coroner observed them and estimated they were around 50 to 60 years old, so identifying their genders was near to impossible. The backstory of the location definitely makes the discovery more okay, but still just imagine these people's initial shock when they went down to the basement and discovered jars with fetuses inside them. Fetuses. At number 4 is the serial killer kit. I'm surprised at how many people are finding random kits in their house, first an exorcism kit and now this. What's next honestly? Reddit said Daily Dishable shared a house with some of their friends a few years ago. They had lived there for quite a while but had never really spent any time in their basement. So one night they got a bit drunk and decided you know what now's the perfect time to explore the basement. They went down there and found a dirt crawl space at the edge of the basement that extended under their front porch. The user's roommate decided to go into the crawl space with a flashlight and he came back out with a duffel bag. I'm sure they opened the bag hoping to find some cool things, maybe even some money, but what they actually did find was a lot worse. They found a 4.5 inch hunting knife that had a broken handle, two black ski masks and one black leather glove. Now I'm not saying there is a perfect kit you could assemble if you were a serial killer, but I'm just saying the stuff they found in that bag would make a pretty decent serial killer kit. Why else would those assortment of items be together to begin with. The friends called the police and asked if any detectives were interested in the bag to which they were surprised to find none were. So they got rid of everything but they kept the knife. A bit sus but okay. Filling our number 3 slot are the devil worshippers. This one's from MJ user Bushi992 who had moved into a new house and had high hopes as we all do when we move into a new house. Initially everything was fine, the house was big, it was spacious, it had natural light from the windows, it was a pretty good investment. But when he went into the basement, that all changed. He went inside the basement to find it was full of remnants of satanic rituals. I'm talking a devil's eye, a summoning circle, a message that said within me the devil burns, and a bunch of other disturbing symbols that he couldn't figure out. He was in shock as any normal person would be. So much for prime real estate. Now at number 2 are the sharks. Now this story isn't one about the owner themselves finding something in their house, but someone did find something in a house. So I thought it still fit the video. In 2017, the Department of Environmental Conservation Offices in New York had a search warrant for a home in LaGrangeville. They were investigating a report that the house in question was harboring illegal wildlife and they weren't wrong. When they went into the house, they found a 15 foot above ground pool in the person's basement that had inside of it 7 sandbar sharks as well as a dead hammerhead and 2 dead leopard sharks. SPCA officer Kimberly told CBS2 she's investigating 
treated 4,000 cases in the past and she has never found sharks in anyone's house before. They guessed the owner was breeding them for sale which is illegal since sand tiger sharks are a federally protected species and you can't actually own them on the east coast unless you have a special permit, which this dude obviously didn't have. This is super weird I know but how did the guy even afford the upkeep of a 15 foot pool and 10 sharks at some point? I mean it blows my mind. And finally at number 1 is the hand. Now Ernesto Lopez and his sister were cleaning out their grandparents house in Florida and they found a really weird box in their attic. The rectangular wooden container they found contained a sepia wedding photograph, an old map, some ancient looking coins and finally a mummified skeletal hand. Yeah, don't worry, I was also like, what the hell? Let's go through each item. Now, the photo was most likely Ernesto's great grandparents. The coins and maps he thought were from Jose Gaspar, who was a Spanish pirate that gave his lord to the Lopez family. And well, no one knows anything about the hand, whose it is, why it is, where it came from, absolutely nothing. He even took the items to the Tampa Bay History Center, and the curator there was also just clueless. He said the coins were too thin to be pirate loot, but the maps were from the 20s or 30s and he just didn't know what to make of the hand and honestly neither do I. And that's all for today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed hearing all about the creepy stuff people have found in their houses and you're probably feeling really lucky sitting behind the screen that you never had to find any of these things. But if you do have any creepy stories for me about the stuff you found, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to reply to as many as I can. As always I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll see you next time, bye!